start with the whiskey bacon. Uh, I've got all the ingredients laid out here. So we'll start mixing them together and see how this is done. First off, we have um, the basic mixture for any uh, dry equilibrium cure. And then the other stuff, you can add any kind of flavors or anything you want. So the basics to get this started, um, to get the cure started, is to have salt. And it's just coarse salt. Um, that's the first. The second is to add a little sugar to that basic. Uh, cure and then the last one is to add curing salt this is also called prog prog salt uh, insta cure um, but nevertheless it's about 6.25 percent sodium nitrite and uh, this is what uh, helps to preserve the food from spoilage so there's just very very little in there and you add that and it happens to be pink the reason it's pink is it's it's poisonous and you wouldn't want to consume that uh, instead of table salt or something like that. So it's colored pink, at least in the U.S., so that you don't confuse it. Suggestion is that you keep um, the cure away from your table salts, away from your sea salts. That is not Himalayan pink salt. That is something quite different. So um, it's good to keep that away from all of the other uh, salts you have in the house. So those three ingredients are just basically the... The foundation of any cure so what we're doing today is we're going to make bacon as I said and we're going to cure pork belly so the way we're setting this up is that we're going to do an equilibrium cure and an equilibrium cure is we're basically going to have about two and a half percent salt that we're going to cure our pork butt in and the cool thing about the equilibrium cure is is once we get the salt spread all over the pork belly and we get it put into a bag and into a fridge to to cure for several days, it can't get too salty. It can only be 2.5% salt according to the weight of the belly. So it's really kind of a foolproof method of not ending up with bacon that's real salty. And believe me, I've had lots of experience with doing that in the past. So doing the equilibrium cure, in this case, we're gonna use 2.5% salt. Um, that's the way we're gonna do it. So. This alone, just this mixture, would be all you would need to do to make bacon um, if you didn't want any other flavor. Uh, however, we're all accustomed to having different flavors of bacon, so we wouldn't just do that. Um, the other thing that the Pink Cure does, or the Instacure does, is it um, makes the bacon have that reddish color. It's certainly safe to make bacon and then freeze it um, and not have the cure in it but um, the bacon will be real, it'll be gray, it'll be kind of pale. So if you want the traditional bacon kind of color, add the cure in there. We'll also, um, the, the prog powder, Instacure, a cure number one, whatever you want to call it, adding that in there will we'll get you that. So um, that's the starts. So for this, um, the whiskey bacon, obviously the main ingredient ingredient is going to be whiskey that will give it the most pronounced flavor, but we're going to add a few other things um, in there as well. There's two tablespoons of dried thyme. So this was stuff we dried directly out of our garden, and I'm going to use that. So that's about two tablespoons of that, and we'll mix that in there. For this particular recipe, there are about three, uh, two tablespoons of black pepper. So we'll put the black pepper in there. It's also about a teaspoon of nutmeg, so we'll put that in there. And then the last dry ingredient is uh, juniper berries. So um, to use these, these are whole. And what we'll want to do is we'll want to crush these um, just to bruise them a little bit so that they release some of their flavors. So we'll just crush these a little bit and then we'll put them in the mix as well. And there's a few that ends up on the floor. So there's the juniper bruised and put into the mix. And we'll mix that up. And the last couple ingredients, one is the garlic, but the garlic's wet, so I don't want to put it in with the, with the dry mixture. It'll just make it a little more difficult to, to put it on the pork belly. 
And then of course the whiskey will add at the very end when we put it into the Ziploc bag or a um, vacuum bag, however, however you end up doing it. So pretty simple. Just get that mix mixed together like that. And of course this was all done by weight. Um, I had about a little under a 10 pound pork belly. I cut that pork belly in half. So we ended up a little about, about four and a half pounds or so. Um, so that's how we got the calculations. There'll be notes in the description of the video as far as the actual quantities of all this, but it's really that easy. Um, now you just simply go ahead and take, take the mixture and try to equally put it all over the pork belly. And it really is this easy. So the other, I think I mentioned it, but the great thing about the Equilibrium Cure is that you can't leave it in the fridge too long. Um, so if you happen to do this up, and I would suggest for this thing's about a little over an inch thick, maybe close to an inch and a half, but um, I'd suggest probably seven to ten days in the fridge to have the cure go all the way through and to have have it working all the way at once. But if you left it in for two or three weeks, it wouldn't get any more salty. And that's the whole advantage of doing the equilibrium cure as opposed to doing some kind of wet cure or just packing it in salt for a period of time. I started out packing it in salt for a period of time. It's really kind of guesswork as to how long to leave it and how salty it is. And then you're testing it and you're frying it up and you're putting it in water because it's too salty and it just becomes part of the process that's such a variable that either makes or break having good good bacon. So the Equilibrium Cure, we have found, at least for us, the 2.5% seems to be about perfect for what we like for our salt content. So, of course, when you make your own, you can decide whether that's too much and you can lower it, or you could also increase it a little bit. So, okay. And once that's done, the juniper berries really go everywhere. That's the only bad thing. Sometimes I put them in a pepper grinder and grind them down a little bit rather than just bruise them. But nevertheless, so there you are. That's, that's the hard part, to be honest, which isn't really hard at all. Now what we'll want to do is we'll want to put this in a bag um, so that we can then put it in the fridge. So a Ziploc bag, if you can get a large enough Ziploc bag, maybe a, a two gallon bag, or if you have vacuum bags, you can use a vacuum bag, but um, anything just to kind of get most of the air out and then you'll put it in your fridge for seven days, um, seven to 10 days, somewhere in there. And then uh, we'll have a part two of this or I'll extend it onto this video, but I'll show that uh, when that's ready so we can see all steps of it. But that's that's the whiskey bacon so what we'll do now is we'll put the last bit of wet ingredient the garlic i don't want to forget that and then we'll put it in a bag and then once it's in the bag we'll put the whiskey in so let's see if we can turn this over without getting juniper berries everywhere Okay, that looks pretty evenly coated, making sure you get all sides as well, so you can have the cure penetrating from all sides of the bacon. So, all right, now the fun part is getting this inside an 11 inch vacuum bag for me. Um, so we'll do that now.
So you just get it in there. Best you can. You can see it's a really tight fit. That's what she said, right? Okay, now we'll vacuum that up and then I'll show you that. Oh yeah, can't forget, add the whiskey. Try to add it so that you don't take all the toppings off. Like that. Okay, and there it is, vacuum sealed. Um, Pretty well. You just got to be really careful when you vacuum seal it because you can't pump liquid into your vacuum sealer. So you got to get the air evacuated just to the point to where you hit seal. It doesn't suck too much up when it finishes the seal cycle. So there you go. And that will sit in the fridge for seven to ten days or whenever you can get to it. And it will be uh, it'll be awesome. So we'll see that part of it once it's done.